Shalom Hebrews. This is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood. All right, Hebrews. You know, we was made one. We was made into one people during the Babylonian wars. And the only reason that you got, like, uh, Israel and Judah spoke about, like, you know, is because that Judah was like our last chance because the promise to King David. So King David's descendants kind of, you know, during the Babylonian Wars, the ones that was took off, you know, some Israelites was taken too, but the Creator was basically dealing with the tribe of Judah, you know, because Judah had a long history of trying to do the law trying to follow the covenant whereas the northern kingdom broke away from following the covenant during Jeroboam time after the death of Solomon so you know the uh the northern kingdom was already messed up since uh 931 BC after the death of Solomon and and then how the tribe of Judah had, you know, good kings and bad kings, but mostly good kings. And then the bad kings, they would be, you know, wishy-washy. You know, they'll try to follow Almighty Yah, and then they'll break off and go do, you know, the Amorite culture or the Egyptian culture. And then when they get in trouble, they'll get back on the covenant and so forth. You know, we see a fruit king's history like that. But... The tribe of Judah was given a chance, and that's why come you see the uh, Judah in Israel because Israel was already washed up and, and cast away since 722 BC when the Creator sent the Assyrians in to take the monarch and the leaders away. All the leaders that, that would defend the Egyptian religion on covenant soil they got taken away the army and so forth you know and then that's why i want to explain also is that man there's a lot of people claiming the israelite heritage man it's man it's it, it's sad in the sense but then it's kind of you know good because now we get to show truth and then we get to straighten up the error but how long it's gonna take man it's you know the creator going to be working a miracle with this because if you look at the state a man of the Israelites or the Israelites that supposedly woke man you will see man that they man man is in a terrible condition man and in how they understand it man the Israelite history man is it is whack man is whack you know what I'm saying and it ain't true and this will prolong us, you know, getting into the position that we need to be in is because you got Israelites that be teaching myths, you know what I'm saying, and be teaching lies and so forth. That's like I was watching this one video where the uh, Israelites in purple, men the Israelites in purple, men that be on the corners and stuff, uh, teaching this native in Indian how she from the tribes of Israel and how she from the tribe of Gad. And I'm talking about he reading off all kind of scriptures and stuff. And, and you know what I'm saying? And he even got her convinced. And then one of the things he messed up on was when he was describing, when he was reading the voice, I think I stopped it at that, when he, when he was reading the verse to the uh, Native American wo woman, is that he said that they'll be in, houses and houses and with doors now pause the natives didn't have houses and doors you know if if they allegedly say that they from the tribes of israel and then came over in 722 bc now we, we know that the natives didn't get no doors and stuff i got a video explaining how the israelites man are pirates man are history pirates you know what I'm saying? And how we take other folks' history and claim it as our own. But where is this nonsense about 
the, the Ten Lost Tribe, man, the Israelites spread it and then create their own false doctrines, man, on top of that. And then that's what these brothers doing when they trying to convince that native woman that she's a tribe of Israel using the scriptures too. Now we know the natives ain't getting no houses and no windows and no doors and and carts and horses and so forth until the conquistadors come over and stuff and how it would have been impossible for the Israelites to have been in the Americas mean before the transatlantic slave trade. Impossible because of the technology that we was exposed to. I just recently did a video not too long ago about how we build the White House and all the monuments here in America and so forth. So we know that there ain't no Israelites came to America uh, uh, pre-transatlantic slave trade because of our building techniques and so forth. And man, that's kind of like, you know, that's throwing dirt on us to say that we was in the Americas man, before the transatlantic slave trade. You know, and let me see if I can get them to say something on this here because, you know, man, it is awful how Israelites, man, we want to save everybody. Like I said before, and that when Israelites, man, be getting these other ethnic groups that didn't experience chattel slavery. Now, chattel slavery, man, ain't nothing like chattel slavery. Now, now the people that was in the Americas that, that the, uh, Europeans tried to enslave, man, they couldn't handle handle chattel slavery, man. Chattel, chattel slavery back then would have extinct them. And then how that they took off into the woods and disappeared. And how it was hard to hold a native as a slave in America and how he'll get away and be gone. And it was useless, a waste of time and money trying to capture the natives because they knew the land. Whereas the Israelites that was captured from Africa took into the Americas. This was like a foreign land to us and why we endured slavery so long and couldn't escape. And then the ones that did escape found themselves in the native nations. And, and it wasn't always cool. It wasn't always cool and because we know that the natives owned slaves and stuff. So that'll be going against prophecy to have Israelites owning Israelites uh, uh, in bondage un under curses, and we can account for the pig minute uh, uh, slave owners who, who the people try to say, well, y'all own people own y'all, and we know that how that they was the Seb Hardys mixing with the uh, Hebrew women slaves and their descendants, and they would make them kids slaveholders and so forth. So, you know, everything is accounted for, but this is a trip. How this brother, these groups, men, uh, uh, try to convince these natives and, and so forth that they Israelites and how we became one during the Babylonian Wars. And I'm going to show this, but, but it's messed up to take uh, uh, our history and, and then abuse it and then try to make everybody into Israelites. You know, that that what Israelites do, man, they enjoy preaching and giving a ceremony, man, it feeling good, man, to be out in the open, people can see and hear you talk and you recognize and stuff, man, you know, we know that the uh, system ain't gonna let you be on corner teaching on real truth and stuff and how they ain't going for that, but listen to this, bro, let me see if it'll play. He came in, he had your inheritance, the things that your land, everything that you own was turned to the white man, so-called white man, right? Our houses to aliens. Our houses to aliens. So called white men is the real alien. See, right? look, they didn't have no houses. They didn't have no houses to uh give to the aliens and stuff when the Caucasians come over here. And that the Caucasians come over here, the, the conquistadors and the Europeans coming from Spain and stuff come over here from the America, South America and the Americas. And build houses and so forth. The, the little houses that they did know how to build. And that they really didn't get no houses built. Till they brought the slaves over to the Americas. Now that would be fulfilling uh, uh, curses and stuff. And how did these brothers, man, don't know scriptures. And, and then how did they lead her and stuff, man. Just really, you know, they, they Christians. They a big old Christian 
organization that they try to use a, a, a portion of the Israelite history because we know that them groups are mostly, you know, teaching out the New Testament and then they don't have any idea of, of where the New Testament come from or, or anything. They just take the New Testament history, man, and just accept it. And then we know that the New Testament history is false and that how the Ashkenazi uh, uh, moved into the land during the Babylonian Wars and was never driven out to the uh, uh, Islam uh, uh, came and uprooted them and then how that they, you know, stayed in the promised land through different Christian organizations uh, taking over the promised land, the Catholic Church, a byproduct uh, of Ashkenazi creation and how that they had proxy wars with the Sephardis who come created Islam, you know, and I can even explain in the videos how they're doing Muhammad time the Jews that he was dealing with, the the, the Nab uh, uh Muhammad, the Nabataean, Petrian and so forth, and the Jews that he was dealing with, the Sebherdine and any Jews that Muhammad ran across during his time were not the children Israel and how the children Israel was deep in deep in the Sahara and so forth, waiting on the transatlantic slave trade. Yes, yes. So, you know, it's a lot going on, but I want to explain how we are one and then how we are not all these ethnic, different ethnic groups that the Israelites be trying to claim, trying to milk them folks out their money. And then, like I said before, why wouldn't a, a native or, or a, a Hispanic Take that position, you know, with, with the Israelite telling them that, hey, y'all from the tribes of Israel. And then, you know, man, the native go, let the Israelite, the real Israelite, explain how the native is an Israelite. And then they're going to be listening closely. And then they're going to latch on to that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, they figure if we accept them as natives and then make up a history for them, knowing that we the real Israelites, then it must be true. Now, ain't none of this prophecy and so forth, and we can account how the clove culture come from the, the, the Iberian coast, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Come from Iberia, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and then, how did they come from Asia? long time ago and then how they come across Alaska and so forth and then you know kind of went on down into the Americas wide open you know that they didn't have the borders Canada stopping the natives from going off into you know what they call North America and so forth and then even going on down to South America man how it wasn't no problem you know what I'm saying the uh men me the Caucasians had to use the uh Hebrew slaves to uh, build a little part in the Panama, you know, the Panama Canal, you know what I'm saying? But before them, man, the folks can walk straight on down from from North America all the way on down to uh, South America, you know what I'm saying? They can come from Russia like they did, you know what I'm saying, over in these parts, you know what I'm Saying the natives that they original roots and then went over to the uh Siberia and the I Iberian coast and then you know they come on across. There's nothing. It's nothing for them to come on across there. Me and that little piece of land. There's nothing for them to come across there. Nothing. Nothing for them to come across there. Nothing for them to come across there. And then they'll come on down. And then they'll come on down to Mexico or Central America and then off into South America and then that's where the natives was and so forth. Now I ain't saying no Hamites ain't come over you know what I'm saying? Man, man, before then, but we know that the felon angelic beings was over here in the America. The felon angelic beings probably gonna have some pigmentation and now that they was over here in the Americas is how you get those 
mega structures and so forth. And they already said that a Sumerian bow with the Sumerian cuneiform uh, uh, scripts was found in South America and so forth. And one of those Zagreb's, you know, the pyramids and so forth. I can go into that history later on. But those folks were not. And, and after all that time of building mega structures and pyramids that them folks that had no will that they didn't domesticate no animals like we would have had to have sheep goats and cattle and so forth man if we was in the americas at any time man before the transatlantic slave trade because we did sacrifices and so forth sacrifices even 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 if it was sacrifices that, that the egyptian culture Required and we was on Egyptian religion, you know, we'd have had to had golden calves Golden calves and so forth and then you know, I know As I explained natives didn't have no metal glory. They couldn't make no glass or none of that stuff and we was well custom with, with, with all that culture as the Tanakh history explained and so forth so these brothers be telling them did them folks that oh y'all the children of Israel, y'all the children of Israel, and then be making up history for them. Man, that's false, man, and, and it's wrong when the Israelite do that because you know them people are not the tribes of Israel, and, and it's terrible to uh try to say that they are the tribes of Israel and that they suffered the curses. Man, it's like really you disrespecting. Almighty Yah, because chattel slavery, men was nothing like that on the face of this earth. And we know that the natives didn't experience chattel slavery. And it would have been impossible for them to escape chattel slavery and, and being totally owned by your uh, uh, captors. And, and man, that your life can end at any time being in chattel slavery and how the natives didn't have to go through that. So we know something ain't right. And when these Hebrews be teaching that, man, it's for a, a, a monetary gain and so forth. Man, it's for monetary gain. You know, it's for monetary gain. You know what I'm saying? That's like they, this, these folks, the, the Africans. You know, the Africans are trying to say that the Bantus and the other Africans are, 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 are leftover Israelites that went into Africa now, now, this is where they mess up at, is that their history is wrong, too. And, you know, that they, that they false because that, you know, we are a unique people and our sins is written down in the Tanakh. Ain't no way in the world that we could have been left off in Africa in large numbers and, and not destroy the whole Africa or, or, or tear it apart because our sins and then our creative abilities and then the culture that we was exposed to mean you would have seen all the creations that we created for the americas and so forth in africa and man it's a whole lot of history and reasons and proof to show that the africans are not israelites and then you know i explained where the uh where the Igaboos and the Limbas come from and how did they come from the Yemenite, Edomite Jews that went over into Ethiopia and settled. Man, man, I got a video, you know what I'm saying, explaining this and how did those Edomite went through out Africa, you know, converting and so forth. Man, this is how you can prove that our people are not the tribes of Israel is because we Israelites went into Africa as a whole to do the Egyptian Sahara religions. As a whole to do the Egyptian Sahara religions as the Tanakh stated. So it's impossible, you know, after we had abandoned covenant, we told the prophet as it's written down that we didn't want nothing to do with the covenant and that forget the laws Moses gave us breaking the covenant as Almighty Yah said we would do. So if Almighty Yah outlined some curses, knowing that we would break the covenant before it was broken and then set a punishment in place, then man, all these folks 
in Africa cannot be Israelites because you cannot miss the ship to Egypt. It took 275 years to remove us from Africa. And I explained how the League of Nations, the European nations, after enslaving us from the Sahara and so forth, and how they searched the whole Africa and, and all the European nations, Spain searched East Africa and Italy and East Africa, France, uh, uh, all in the Sahara, and Germany had them apart, and me and we know Britain took South Africa over, and I oh mean the, the the Dutch, the Swedens, all them folks got the peace of Africa, and they searched, they searched and sent missionaries in after they got control, and then they divided Africa up because we know Africa didn't have the uh, political boundaries that you have today. These 51 nations and, and so forth didn't exist. Man, before the League of Nations divided the whole Africa up. And then when, when the Africans got their liberation during the, uh, uh, maybe in the anti-colonialist days and when they overthrew the, the colonialists and so forth, leaders like Kwame Nkrumah, uh, Siku Turi, and Man, 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 a host of other ones. And uh, uh, how did they uh, got control somewhere that they land and, and, and could chart their destiny? And how did the Africans been suffering because they've been selling their peoples out and, and stuff like that? But how did they suffering is not biblical and it's not long and enduring. And how did they ain't wasting away in the enemy's land and how did the Africans had a choice not to let the Europeans in to uh, do them that way and so forth and how we didn't have no choice when we was captured in the Sahara is because we had Hamites working against us and then we had the Europeans working against us on top of Almighty Yah's wrath so it was zero chance of us escaping and enduring the chattel slavery that we endured that the Africans never experienced. So they can't be Israelites. And then, man, how everybody is jocking for Israelite heritage, the pigmented peoples. That's why I be telling them Jews, man, they about to come on and settle this Israelite issue through the Israelite brotherhood. It is because, man, it ain't going to be too long, man, for everybody, man, be saying, that they Israelites and then you know I know the mode of confusion how it helped the Jews and how the Jews got nuclear bombs to try to defend their holdings in the promised land but when people start understanding the history that the Israelite brotherhood showed that the nuclear bombs can't even save them because you know truth on heritage is more powerful Almighty Yah is more powerful than the weapons that they created to defend their uh, uh, holdings that they acquired when we Israelites uh, uh, abandoned covenant. You know what I'm saying? I want you Israelites to listen to this. Man, these folks. There you go again with and another Israelite being mistaken for an Egyptian. This is a Greek person having a conversation with a brother Paul. And then look, this... This dude swerving down that 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 Paul that Paul was an Israelite. Now this is where the Africans go wrong and don't know the history. And then you can tell that they be watching the camps doctrine and then thinking that that's the history for the Israelite community when it's not. Now the camps are using uh, uh Jewish myths and so forth, but how he. He, he say that some Greeks mistaken Paul for being an Egyptian. Guess what? The, the, the Greeks the Greeks took Egypt over in, in 332 BC, the whole Egypt. So any European that settled in Egypt would have been called an Egyptian after uh, after 300 some 330 two years or, or allegedly when Paul and them and, and, and that Jesus fella them was born that all he would have seen was Europeans I got plenty of videos explaining how the Greeks from Greece 
took Egypt over, meaning destroyed the Persians. See, the Persians were protecting the exiles, that little 1% that was the promise to King David to give him a light to see what they do. I got a video explaining men the exiles history and so forth. And matter of fact, I got a video men explaining with King David come back, breaking the history down of how King David descendants were destroyed basically by the Egyptians. The Egyptians destroyed that promise to King David. And then when King David descendants got back in the promised land under the Persians' protection because the creator called Cyrus by name like 150-some years, man, before he was born. Man, let me look at that. So, you know, that, 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 that when Cyrus was born, the Cyrus fulfilled, Cyrus fulfilled the scriptures, the, the prophecies of, of, of bringing, letting the exiles, David's descendants, come back home so that was fulfilled that was fulfilled and then you know Cyrus right there man prophet Isaiah gave that oracle about Cyrus the, the Persian uh, uh, freeing the exiles in 7 11 BC and, and then it come about in 559 BC 152 years man but before Cyrus come on the scene Prophet Isaiah had already said it. So this King Cyrus would have been protecting King David's land because they was like the good fruits that did go to Babylon, where some of them probably had a chance to get off into Africa a long time ago. But but how did they was captured and went on to Babylon and believed in Almighty Yah and, and then come back home. And, and then when they come back home, man, that's the book of Ezra. Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, Zechariah, them, them books show that the, uh, that the exiles from the Babylonian captivity sin so bad, sin so bad, that that's what made the, uh, made the Greeks come, and, and the Greeks would destroy the Persians, their protectors, their protectors were destroyed, you know, their protectors were destroyed because if, if if you read them books, you know that's why come we was made one because it couldn't be no two man it couldn't be no two covenants one broken and then one not broken you know what I'm saying that Almighty y'all don't function like that and then when the exiles come back from the Babylonian captivity which would make the Greeks come after they destroyed the uh the, I mean, the Persians. If you read these books, Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, you see that it was over. It was zero chance to recover. And then I prove in countless videos, which I'ma do men again of how the ninety nine percent went into Africa during the Babylonian wars. You know what I'm saying? And how that the creator wasn't talking through the northern kingdom since 722 B.C. But how the tribes of Israel were still around. You know what I'm saying? Even some of the tribes of Israel even lived in Judah. Man, I got plenty, plenty of uh, history. Man, but where the tribes of Israel lived in Judah. Man, I might even try to pull some, some of that up. Where the tribes of Israel lived in Judah, man, man, it wasn't no thing for the uh, tribes of Israel meant to have been living in Judah, and we did sometime when it was a good king. Look, and and, and he gathered. Uh, let me see. This is Second Chronicles. I think this is fifteen nine. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim, Manasseh, and out of Simon, and they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Elohim is Yah was with him. And then this see what Chronicles uh, uh, 1, 1, 20, 1, 26, 5, 26, I believe that's gonna be the uh the tribal the, the tribal Benjamin and them getting took. But anyway, you know, so Israel 
lived in Judah, and, and, and I got some more verses that, that I could prove, you know, which which I can show doing uh doing Jeremiah times that Israel was around and how he was still sent to the northern kingdom, and and, and then when Babylonian wars started, that would make everybody go into uh Africa. That would make everybody go into Judah and then start to go in, into Africa because Judah sins was starting, you know what I'm saying, to be just like the northern kingdom and so forth. But but this is what I want to get back to, how Cyrus protected the exiles and then how did they sin uh, uh, made the Greeks come to where in 332 B.C. Uh, uh, the Greeks had Egypt uh, uh took over and every every European every European and people from Europe uh, of what they call Europe today all these folks moved down to Egypt all these folks moved down to Egypt and, and you know that's how Egypt you know turned non pigmented and then you had the Ptolemies they even had statues and so forth of the Ptolemies and how the Egypt ain't been in the Africans hands the the the, the Hamite uh, uh, hands since Three, uh, uh, man, basically since five, uh, five, five, uh, uh, thirty-eight. You know what I'm saying? When, when the Persians whooped, you know what I'm saying? The uh, the Babylonians, and how did no pig many peoples been in control of Egypt since then? You know what I'm saying? And Almighty Yah already said how Egypt would be destroyed, and ain't no African uh, been in control of Egypt since. The Egyptians dealing and tricking the Israelites out the heritage. Even, even, even the Egyptians lost Egypt. You know what I'm saying for that. As Almighty y'all always deal with our treacherous enemies and so forth. Alright, you see that the Greeks had Egypt in 332 BC. That when this devil Paul was walking around and so forth and went to other planes. Places he wouldn't have been pigmented, he would have been a Caucasian, and it would have been easily to mistaken him. You know what I'm saying? To, well, not to mistaken, but to call him uh, an Egyptian because the Egypt was controlled by the Caucasians since 332 BC. That if Paul is in Tyrus and in, in in his homeland or in any of these parts, and he's classified or said. He was an Egyptian. They will be referred to the Caucasian Egyptians. They took Egypt over since 332 B.C. That's like I explained in the video how it's impossible for Jesus to have ran to Egypt and he being a black person, being that the, uh, e the Greeks had Egypt since 332 B.C. And they wouldn't have allowed Jesus to... Uh, had in Egypt as a black person. You see what I'm saying? Being that they was white. So, you know, that whole story that we get about the demigods and the demigod worship come from our captors doing what is called chattel slavery. Chattel slavery. Now, you know what I'm saying? Man, listen. Man, listen to this. Sister. As one of the most important sources of capital in foreign exchange in the U.S. economy. Wachovia Bank, recently acquired by Wells Fargo. Wachovia Bank. Also profited heavily off of this cruel system. Mayor Rothschild, a German banker and the founder of the Rothschild's banking dynasty, which is believed to have become the wealthiest family in human history, made enormous gains by using our ancestors as collateral. The insurance industry also saw great benefits from slavery. Companies like AIG, Aetna, New York Life were the forerunners in this industry. But see, it's also very important to note that these same plantation owners and business owners would donate large sums of this wealth in order to train their children and the next generation on containing the wealth. For example, Harvard. Harvard was built due to large amounts of money given by Isaac Royal, a plantation owner in the Caribbean islands of Antigua, who made a massive fortune off of his mini ship.
I mean, we know how that they got on and how that they profit from the punishment that the Creator said that the Israelites would go through. You know what I'm saying? All right, the Bantus ain't ain't been through this. The Bantus ain't suffered this, and, and, and the Bantus been living in Africa and how that they could have repelled the enemies that moved there. Whereas the Israelites was prophesied to get taken into ships into a uh, they bondage and so forth and how we can't defeat the prophecies or the curses, you know, and like I said to 275 years to remove us, you know what I'm saying, from Africa and then look, this is where our enemies and the people who don't know Israelite history get confused by when, when they try to say, man, that we've been through all these captivities, yeah, we was in captivity. Look, captivity patterns for the Israelites. I mean, this is false. Yes, we was in the Egyptian captivity, but it wasn't for no 400 years. As I show uh, how our father Jacob even blessed Pharaoh. Now, why would our father bless Pharaoh? Meaning if we in bondage in Egypt and how we didn't go into bondage in Egypt when we first got there you see what i'm saying and how we wasn't in bondage when we first got in egypt you see what i'm saying and, 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 and then look all right joseph let me see and joseph was brought down to part the part no that's not it but let's find the part with our father jacob blessed pharaoh and how did our bondage didn't come on until the hamites the uh the the upper egyptians got control and then when the upper egyptians got control then our bondage you know what i'm saying come on and so forth and, 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 and how we wasn't in bondage in egypt to the uh to the uh pharaohs of uh, upper egypt come on you know what i'm saying and then uh all right and, and israel took his journey and all that he had and Come to Beersheba. Now let me see this. Jacob rose to Beersheba. Let me see. And Jacob rose up from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel carried Jacob their father and their little ones and their wives in the wagon which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. And, and, and then they took his cattle and his goods. All right, he come to Egypt. All right, him and his sons. All right. And the land of Egypt is before thee. All right. And Joseph brought in Jacob. This is Genesis 47 7. And Joseph brought in Jacob his father and set him before Pharaoh. And, and Jacob blessed Pharaoh. So we ain't gonna be in bondage right then. These the lower, these the lower Egyptians, the ones that control lower Egypt, Swiss, the ones that we got entrapped with and lost our heritage fooling with them. Them will be the ones that that Solomon, that, that Joseph was given the priest of own daughter. And then uh, uh, Solomon would marry into him. And then how the tribe of Ephraim would have a long-standing connection with the Egyptians from Lower Egypt. Not the Nubian, Ethiopian stock from Upper Egypt. But the Lower Egyptians are the ones that we was kin to. We sojourned with them. We mixed with them. I'm talking about the Tanakh show this. You know, they even left with us up on exodus you know when the upper egyptians come on the, the men the hamites and then we exodus egypt you know what i'm saying and, and, and then some mix uh, a mixed group of uh men some africans left with us and that's gonna be the ones from the lower egypt man if you go to exodus 12 38 and a mixed multitude went up also with them, flocks and herds, and, and very much cattle. And these are the cattle worshippers. These are the the uh, 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 Pata, Amon Ra worshippers and stuff. The 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 the, the, the Ayas Horus worshippers, the 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 Hatar worshippers and stuff. And they left with us, and they would trickles with that golden calf when Prophet Moses went up to get the law and then they seen what no leader around and they tried to put the egyptian worship on us did as they would eventually do after we settled in the promised land through their kindred uh, uh jerobaham who was the tribe of ephraim 
who was a, a mother, the, the tribe of Ephraim, mama was a lower Egyptian. Her father was a lower Egyptian priest. These are the Egyptians that control lower Egypt and control what you call Libya. Libya was they like stomping grounds in the Sahara and they even had baby pyramids and they responsible for the pyramid building in Egypt's religious system. The, the uh, sun worship and so forth and how that they responsible for that and, and worshiping cattle gods and stuff and then how did they control what's called Libya and Lord Libya you'll see the pyramids the devils be trying to hide that they don't want you to know about them pyramids men in Lord Libya and so forth but the ones from upper Egypt men control this part of stuff and how we was kicking it with them the whole time and then how Joseph was given one of the uh, one of their daughters, the, the pharaohs uh, uh, gave the priest daughter to him, and then they, they was being low down when he did that because he know that look they done tried to cruise Joseph or raping the woman and all kind of stuff, and then many Egyptians was was, was real slick, and then after cruising him and then throwing him in prison and then letting him out, and then they stick him with a woman and so forth and then you know that woman with the, the Egyptian priest daughter and then how they would have two kids two children and then, and then the priest of own is something serious and then we even got an artifact from the where we was enslaved from when the uh, upper Egyptians took over lower Egypt Man, an obelisk was erected and so forth and then they got that obelisk in Central Park, but look, Genesis 41, and Joseph called, and, and Pharaoh called Joseph named Zephaniah Paneah, and he gave him to wife Asenet, the daughter of Potipari, priest of On. and Joseph went out all over the land of Egypt, and unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenet, the daughter of Potipari, priest of On, bore unto him, and Joseph called the name of the first born Manasseh for Yah said he had made me forget all my toil and all my father's house in the name of the second call he Ephraim for Yah had caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction so you know I can show that the tribe of Ephraim man always kept a little slick e Egyptian man connection also you know what I'm saying and that would cause our destruction but we wasn't in captivity. We wasn't in captivity for 400 years in Egypt. We sojourned in Egypt that long, but our captivity came on about, man, a, a, a 200 some years later. You know, we got stuck on Egypt. We probably could have been in left Egypt at one time, but how we got into Egypt and stayed there. And after our father Jacob had passed away and Joseph and them, them passed away, they did how we hung around Egypt and got enslaved and so forth. All right, the the Assyrian captivity, man, the Assyrian captivity is not what our enemies been teaching. And then how I explain, man, I got a, a video explaining how the Assyrians basically needed our ancestors, the three, the three tribes, even though we was robbing and stealing and killing and fighting against each other and the Assyrians got involved in our activities based upon Judah hiring them to to uh, get the, uh, the the northern kingdom up off them and how that the Assyrians really didn't really didn't do it you know what I'm saying because they was associated with the tribe of Ephraim who took uh, uh, all into Egypt for them and then how the Assyrians really wanted to destroy the tribe of Judah, but how did they couldn't and stuff because the promise that Almighty Yah made to King David way before the Assyrians come on the uh, uh, scene and so forth. So the Assyrians were never able to conquer the tribe of Judah, you know what I'm saying? Like they wanted to during King Hezekiah time and how the you know the folks was driven out the way, but I explained how the Assyrians needed the northern kingdom fighters to help them against Ashkenazi who was coming up out of the Caucasus mountain and the folks up in 
turkey that lived up on the ground and how that they was coming off and up on the ground causing the Syria trouble. You know, Syria start robbing with them, including them in the, in the army. And then how did those folks turn vicious on the Syria? You know what I'm saying? This these pyramids that we would build in the Sahara when we ran into uh, Africa during the Babylonian Wars to kick it with the lower Egyptians who control lower Libya, where the Grementians was, our first derogatory name. I'll probably go into that too. But I can show where the Assyrians, I mean, the Assyrians needed the, uh, or just this obelisk that I mentioned that that's in Central Park. That obelisk is in Central Park. It's called the Cleopatra Needle and so forth. And they took it from Halapolis, the city, the, the city of own. You know what I'm saying? And it was there when we went into bondage by the uh, upper Egyptians taking over lower Egypt. And then when we, you know, Exodus and so forth and went into the promised land and have thousands of years later, our enemies will go get this same obelisk that's in Central Park right now today for from from Africa and bring it over here as a symbolizing of our uh, being conquered and so forth and held up in the Egyptian system. And then that's a statue of Nietzsche. He will kill King Josiah. I'm going to try to go into that history too as I'm explaining this. But, all right, the, the Assyrian captivity... The Assyrian captivity was not what people think it was and how that the Assyrian captivity, you know, was more like us trying to save the Assyrians because I could show that we had a relationship with the Assyrians. That's why come it would have been possible for it to be a ten lost tribes when the tribe of Ephraim had an association with the Assyrians, as I can show, if you go to, uh, man, that would be Hoshea, 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 let's see, that would be Hoshea Toya. All right, this was written in 753 BC. All right. Ephraim, this is Hosea 12. Ephraim feedeth on wind and followeth after the east wind. He daily increases lies in desolation. And they do make a covenant with the Assyrians. And oil is carried into Egypt. That's why I come doing, doing the so called Assyrian captivity that some of the tribes were able to escape and how it wasn't no 10 lost tribes and if you go to uh second chronicles second chronicles chapter 30 second chronicles 30 this is king hezekiah this is seven years after the so-called assyrian captivity and we know how almighty y'all saved hezekiah from the assyrians and how that the assyrians would take uh, uh, Manasseh, his son, to Babylon for his sins, but then they show that the uh, that the Israelites were helping the uh, the Assyrians conquer and take back control of Babylon, and then that's how that when Manasseh prayed and so forth, he was able to come home. But but if you read Hezekiah, this is seven years after the so-called Assyrian captivity. Let me see if I can even pull up a map, man, with some of these uh, uh, king's dates and so forth. And then you can see, you know, that he was seven years after the Assyrian captivity. Hezekiah was. I know this already. And you can look this date up. Look, 716. Hezekiah, when he come on, 716. Man, man, where, where this feast was in, seven. 15 and this was seven years after the Sephardis was placed by the Assyrians so you know you can see that that was after the so-called Assyrian captivity when Hezekiah come on and look 
and Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of the Elohim at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Elohim of Israel. For the king had taken counsel in his princes and all the congregation in Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at that time because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently, neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation, and they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel. Look, throughout all Israel, from Beersheba even to Dan, so the tribe of Dan still around too, that they should come to the house uh, to keep the Passover uh, unto the Elohim Yah of Israel at Jerusalem, for they had not done it for a long time. So let's look and see where the uh, where the uh, where Beersheba the Dan is. You know, Beersheba the Dan. So this shows that the folks still home after the so-called Assyrian captivity, as King Hezekiah finna say. All right, look, you see. From Beersheba, right there, all the way to Dan. Man, the Syrians gonna get the tribes on the east side of the Jordan. Them the ones they snatched the fighters. They was on the front line. They was on the front line, and how the Syrians needed them. You see, the Syrians needed them, and I'm gonna show this. But you see, from Beersheba, all the way to Dan. You know what I'm saying? King Hezekiah sent the letter. And this was in 715 B.C. All right. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel from Beersheba even to Dan that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Elohim of Israel at Jerusalem. For they had not done of it of a long time in such short as it was written. So the post went with the letters. From the king and his princes throughout all Israel and Judah, according to the commandment of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel, turn again unto the Elohim, Yah, of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and he will return to the remain of you that are escaped out of the hands of the kings of Assyria. So they escaped out of the hands of the king of Assyria, and then he go down to name the tribes as you read. You know, it wouldn't make no sense for the Assyrians to kidnap the uh, tribe of Ephraim because the tribe of Ephraim know how to get back home. You see what I'm saying? Because they had a pact with the Assyrians taking all into Egypt. So Manasseh, Zebulun, and men, uh, uh, Asher, all these tribes still home as you read. You know what I'm saying? And then as you finish reading and keep on reading, Man, man, Ephraim, Ishgar, Zebulun, all these tribes are still at home. All these tribes are still at home, and they came to pass over dinner. You see what I'm saying? To eat. So they still at home. So it would have been impossible for the Assyrians to have took ten tribes if everybody is here doing King Hezekiah time, as I show. And then to top it off, if you go to uh, King Josiah, that's King Hezekiah's great grandson. Man, he'll come about, man, maybe about 60, 70 years later, and how all the tribes were still home. And, and then the ones that wasn't mentioned during King Hezekiah time, when he sent the letter and had everybody come to pass over dinner, they gonna be mentioned during King Josiah time. His great grandson, who was a prophecy king, that go all the way back to prophecy, go all the way back to Jeroboam, bringing that Egyptian religion out, and how it was prophesied that Josiah would clean it up. Well, he did, and then you can see the tribes that wasn't mentioned during his great grandfather time. Hezekiah gonna be mentioned during his time. See, so this is Second Chronicles thirty-four. And then when you get down to verse 6, so did he in the cities of Manasseh, Ephraim, Simon, even up to Napoli with their mattucks round about. He cleaned up the whole Israel, the whole 
the, the, the whole southern and northern kingdom from the uh, idol worship as it was prophesied that he would do. You know what I'm saying? So the tribes are still there. The tribes are still home. Look, this this is Second Chronicles, the uh, chapter 34, 33. And Josiah took away all the abomination out of all the countries that pertained to the children of Israel, and, and made all that were present in Israel to serve, even to serve the Elohim their Yah. And all his days they departed not from following the Elohim their Yah. See, the Creator knew the difference between the uh, King David's descendants and the rest of the tribe of Israel. See what I'm saying? Because the rest of the tribe of Israel was messed up on Egyptian religion until King Josiah cleaned it up. All right, so King Josiah would would be on the throne, and then you know the Egyptians would kill him. But let me show uh, again the Assyrians needing these fruit tribes to help them fight and get them skinthians up off of them but it didn't work because the northern kingdom was on egyptian religion and then you know the, the creator sent the Assyrians basically in there to get them up off the promised land with the egyptian religion see some people don't know how almighty y'all work and then when our enemies explain our heritage me and they explain it wrong you know what I'm saying? They explaining it wrong, man. They explaining it where, you know, that that it benefit them. You know, that it benefit them and stuff and that it don't benefit us. You know, a lie don't benefit the Israelites. Man, only the truth benefit the Israelites and how a lie benefit our enemies and so forth has been happening. So they've been lying about the Assyrian captivity. Look, all right, man, if you go to First Chronicles, and then you read down to 18. Look, the sons of Reuben, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh, valiant men, men able to bear buckler and sword and to shoot with bow, skillful in war, were four and four thousand seven hundred and three score that went out to war. Now, these are the fighters. They're going to probably be stationed in the other tribes. And some might be in Napatali, some might be in a uh, 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 Gad, some might have been in a. Uh, 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 in the northern kingdom in, in, in the different little holdings and so forth and how that they was taken and then people would think that those tribes was taken but all the Syrians wanted was the fighters alright then when you get over to uh, 26 and the Yah of Israel stirred up the spirit of Paul king of Assyria and the spirit of Talakalanazer king of Assyria and he carried them away even the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh, and brought them unto Hala and Harbor and Har, men unto the river goes on unto this day. All right, now we know that the uh, tribe of Reuben ain't gonna be mentioned by name like they descendants because of what he did to our father Jacob and how he wasn't just really gonna be named no more throughout Tanakh history. You know what I'm saying? Because of what he did, so his ancestors, uh, Reuben ancestors got snatched up by the Syrians and took him to fight against the Scythians. And the Scythians and the Babylonians, the Chaldeans, held Babylon. And then, you know, they would fight and, and get control of Babylon from the uh, Chaldeans, the, the, the Scythians, Ashkenazi. And then, man, them folks would, you know, come whoop us all and, and chase us into Africa mean eventually all the tribes because as I showed all the tribes are still at home and then that's why in the book of Jeremiah in the book of Jeremiah you're going to see that he still sent to the children of Israel you know he still sent to the children of Israel and how that the uh, name Israel is found throughout the book of Jeremiah now the creator ain't dealing with the uh, he ain't dealing with no leaders from no Pacific tribe to call that tribe by name anymore. And how did the Northern Kingdom been basically cast off since 722 BC when Jeroboam brought the Egyptian religion out? And then how did the Northern Kingdom stayed on it for, for a long time?
people for a long time. I mean, we stayed on Egyptian religion for a long time. Look, all these kings, all these kings, and these are the kings that was robbing and everything. And look, speak, speaking of that, how about they made this video, man, about the Israelites being, uh, uh, me making, you know, I don't be cussing in no videos, but how did they took this video, man, about the, uh, man, man about the robbing and stealing and, and, and then restricted it. This video is restricted and it's stopping me from getting views and everything. And because they don't want to show, you know what I'm saying, you got to be 18 or older. They don't want no kids seeing this. And I'm showing how the kids, man, accepted the culture, the, uh, the gangster rap from back in the days and how it's killing the youth now and, and then how did they restricted that video as they restrict the videos of me showing that the black jews are not the israelites you know and then how that they don't want you to come into an israelite heritage not under their control and how that the black jews are from the uh edomites coming into africa trade routes and how that they've been trying to get us israelites to come into judaism and Either through the Jews or coming up under the the African uh, the the African Hamites that do Judaism and so forth that's claiming the Israelite heritage and how that they want us to believe in the, the Igaboos and the Limbas of Israelites without curses on them and so forth and want us to follow up under them and how I explained that the Igaboos and the Limbas is gonna protect. Eskenazi and the Sephardis, the people that we abandon our heritage to. Now, they banned in them videos. Man, man, if I make a black Jew video, I got to put it up under different title and stuff because if I explain what the video is about, then they ban it because they don't want no uh, uh, history shown about the new conspiracy that they finna unleash and how that they trying to push all the Israelites that's waking up to the uh, uh, Jews that's in Africa that are not Israelites. You know, I mean, it's messed up what we're going through, but it, but it is what it is. We're going to get it right. But we see how the Northern Kingdom, you know, all bad, all bad. So, you know, they couldn't be protecting me in the promised land. You know what I'm saying? So then, you know, they got took during the Syrian times and, and, and the, the leaders and then how the tribe of Israel still around. As I can show, let me see. Say ye up a standard this Jeremiah, but retire not, for I will bring evil from the north, and a great destruction. The lion has come upon his ticket, and the destroyer of the Gentiles is on the way. He has gone forth from his place to make thy land desolate, and thy cities shall be laid waste without inhibiting. All right, yeah, so we know that happened. We know that happened. All right. If thou will return, O Israel, said the Elohim, return unto me, and if thou will put away the abomination out of my sight, then thou shalt not be removed. Almighty Yah was giving even the northern kingdom a chance of doing the Babylonian wars that if we could have stopped doing the Egyptian religion. You know, if we could have stopped doing the Egyptian religion. But, but the tribes of Israel it is all in let me see all in the land all in Judah men inheritance cause it was coming to a uh, man it was coming to an end it was coming to an end it was just about over you know it was just about over and, and the Babylonian wars brought it to an end you know it was over with because we couldn't stop doing the Egyptian religion. I mean, if you read the book of Jeremiah, you'll see that the Creator still mentioning Israel. You know, he's still mentioning Israel. I Many still mentioning Israel. And, and then the uh, the uh, Northern Kingdom was already done. So then that the uh, I men the Southern Kingdom got on the uh, Egyptian religion. And see, they have belied, belied the Elohim and said, It is not he, neither shall evil come upon us, neither shall we see even our feminine sword. Let me see. 
Lo, I will bring a nation upon you from far, O house of Israel, said the Elohim. It is a mighty nation, a nation that, yeah, they sure came. All right. And I had a whole lot of verses just a a explaining how the, the Israelites, you know, was all in Judah. Look, for a voice declared from Dan, look, for a voice declared from Dan, that's Jeremiah 4, for a voice declared from Dan and published affliction from Mount Ephraim, make ye mention to the nations, behold, publish against Jerusalem, that watchers come from far country and give out their voice against the cities of Judah. Me and the tribe of Israel, it, it, it's mentioned throughout the uh, book of Jeremiah. So that when the Babylonian war started, that uh, we was all driven into uh, Africa. When when the Babylonian war started, when the Babylonian wars started, we gonna all be driven into Africa. And then, you know, to uh, do the Egyptian religion. And then that'll be this right here. If you go to First Kings. See, Judah the last. And, and got the last little holdings. And then when when it's over with. And Judah is over with. And, and Judah was over with. Because the Babylonians come chase the people. Men into Africa. Alright. Let's see what we're looking for. Second um, Kings. This is everybody going to Africa. 25, 26. And all the people, both small and great, and the captains of the armies arose and come to Egypt, for they was afraid of the Chaldeans. So, you know, everybody going to Africa. And then we go into Africa to do the Egyptian religion. Almighty, y'all had already said this. If you go to Ezekiel, no, yes, that would be Ezekiel 23. And then I'm going to show how we was made one during the Babylonian Wars. But, but if you see Ezekiel 23, we was all messed up. The word of the Elohim came again unto me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. There were their breasts pressed, and there they bruised the tents of their virginity. In the name of them were Ahala, the sister, and Abala, her sister. And they were mine, and they bore sons and daughters. This were their names. Samaria is a hollow and Jerusalem is a baller. So he's saying that the Egyptians broke us in. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I can show uh, uh, plenty of verses where it happened. But if you go to Ezekiel, this is when we was made war one into one people during the Babylonian Wars. You know, we was made into one during the Babylonian Wars. And then, uh, we were going to one, we were going to Africa as one to reap the curses. And that's why it took 275 years to remove us all from Africa and how all the Israelites end up in a form of chattel slavery. You know what I'm saying? Let me show you the men of chattel slavery. All of us end up men in the form of chattel slavery. Chattel slavery, the, the enslaved person is legally rendered the personal property of the slave owner. I mean, he could put you to death. He could put you to death. Ain't nobody else had that over them where they had some type of uh, legal uh, uh, help or something. You know what I'm saying? But how we didn't get no legal help. You know what I'm saying? And how we built this country and how ain't no natives got treated like this. Ain't no natives, no Chinese, or none of the peoples that's been afflicted. In this system, been treated like this, man. You know what I'm saying? Them folks dogged us out for hundreds of years as we're being dogged out now. And then, as I show that we are the Israelites, you know, the people from the transatlantic slave trade are the Israelites. But look, I can find curses, man, to meet all these pictures. You know what I'm saying? Check this one out, man. You see, dude standing right there. Finna be sold and and look you look you see the little baby man in his hand and stuff 
finna be sold at the auction block. I mean, if you go to uh, Deuteronomy, that's gonna be Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. Ain't nobody on the whole face of this earth experienced no uh, 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 atrocities like we did. You know what I'm saying? It's a known fact. that ain't nobody been through this, but, but if you go to Deuteronomy 28, Man, this see that, that, that curse there mean to be this one right here. 32. Thy, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and then I shall look and fill with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might. And then hand, thou shalt be thwart a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build an house. And thou shalt not dwell therein. See, ain't no natives build no houses because they didn't know how to build houses. And thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and thou shalt not gather the grapes thereof. You know, so, man, that, that happened to us. That happened to us. You know what I'm saying? Them curses happened. Them curses right there. And ain't nobody experienced no chattel slavery but the people from the transatlantic slave trade. You know, picking cotton. Man, you still got some people in, in Mississippi right now, folks, still alive, that pick cotton or, or that they grandmama pick cotton and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Negro sold to be sold on, on board the ship. You know what I'm saying? And, and brought her getting his back whipped. And, and man, I'm talking about for hundreds of years, they did us like this. And how we still suffering now and then how about our enemies so slick that they done tricked the israelites that they done put a cruel slave mask up there that that trump and, and then how most sinister and slick one come in biden that's finna open up all the borders you think we suffering now me and every border in america is finna be open to all the immigrants and when the immigrant first come to a foreign country, they go to the impoverished area to start off because they come here on their feet doing hard times and how did they finna get up off their feet on our back and how you know that the natives are not Israelites. They even own casinos. The natives don't even help us. They ain't got no love for us right now today. You know what I'm saying? And they raped our peoples. You know what I'm saying? And man, that's a curse. I mean, that's a curse, man. But how the natives ain't no Israelites. You know what I'm saying? They ain't suffer none of these curses and so forth. All right? Let's go to the show that we Israelites were made one and how it would have been impossible because if we made one during the Babylonian Wars and then how it would be impossible for uh, the Israelites to have went to the Americas during the Assyrian times that the Israelites that don't know truth passed that uh, allowed to uh, to the natives and so forth, as I have shown. But man, ain't nothing like no chattel slavery, man. Man, ain't nothing like no chattel slavery. I just read them curses when it tell you that everybody be sold, your baby or be sold and taken from you. Man, why you hell no? You know what I'm saying? A uh, way to stop it and how we endured that type of treatment for hundreds of years and how the natives ain't went through none of them curses so they cannot be the children of Israel. Impossible. Impossible for them to be the children of Israel. Alright? This is during the Babylonian Wars. This is when the Creator made us one. Made us into one people. This is Jeremiah uh, e Ezekiel 37. And I shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall place you in your own land. Then ye shall know that I am the Elohim, and have spoken it, and performed it. And the Elohim, the word of the Elohim came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take three sticks. No, no, take thee one stick, and write upon it for Judah, and for the children of Israel, his companions. That's going to be the Israelites that's living in the tribe of judah inheritance you know what i'm saying as i just showed and me and i got some more verses i'm gonna see if i can pull up man that they show that the, the israelites lived in judah's men inheritance especially when it was a good king some of them israelites will want to get on down men and being a good king men inheritance and then 
enjoy the bounty of, you know what I'm saying, of, of, of living in the good land and stuff. But I had a, quite a few verses, man. I should have took them and marked them down how Israel was living in Judah. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I finish the uh, closing the book, you know what I'm saying? Then all, all them verses go pop up. It always be like that when I don't go get all the verses out and so forth. All right, Israel and Judah. I already showed this one. You know, how Israel was in Judah. But there's some more verses. There's a quite a few of them that show how Israel would live in Judah many different times and so forth. All right. We was chased into Africa during the Babylonian Wars for saying that we wanted to do Egyptian religion. And then, you know, we was made men into one people. You know, and, and that's what the book of e e Ezekiel tell us about. You know, this was during the Babylonian Wars. Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions, then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, because the tribe of Ephraim, Joseph house, controlled the northern kingdom, which would have made it impossible for the Assyrians to kidnap them and keep them because they knew their way home from Assyria. All right. For Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions, and join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one and then in hand that's why come there's no mention of the tribes of israel and just the tribe name israel after the babylonian captivity but how judah name would be mentioned because the promise to king david how did it lingered all the way on to the persian lights was put out by the greeks all right Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thee in hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Willest thou not show us what thou meanest by this? Say unto them, This said the Elohim, Yah, Behold, I would take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel his fellows, and would put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one in mine hand. And the sticks whereupon thou shalt write shall be in thee in hand before their eyes. See, we was made into one people during the Babylonian Wars. And that's why come you don't get the tribes of Israel name mentioned no more after the Babylonian Wars like the uh, Benjamin Gad and so forth. You know what I'm saying? You might get a, a little mention uh the tribe of Judah is because of the promise. And, and that went all the way down to they seeing in them prophet books, Ezra, Nehemiah, Haggai, and Zechariah, and then it was over with, you know, but, but how we was made one. So if we all go into Africa doing the Babylonian Wars, as I have shown in plenty of videos, that it's impossible for, you know, us to be all them other ethnic groups. Look, say unto them, this said the Elohim, Yah, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him even with the stick of Judah and make them one stick and they shall be one in thee in hand and the sticks whereupon thou writest shall be in thee in hand before their eyes and say unto them this saith Elohim Yah behold I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen whether they be gone and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land and I will make them one nation in the land of the mountains mountains of men of Israel so that's, that's a prophecy to come too and one king shall be king to them and they shall no more uh, uh, be no more two nations neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all you see what I'm saying so you know that's that's a promise 
that that that's gonna come to pass. And then how we basically all one people right now. If you're from the transatlantic slave trade, and, and that's why some people gonna be jocking, trying to hurry up, trying to find some transatlantic slave trade inheritancy or, or heresy, trying to say, well, I'm from the transatlantic slave. I mean, you're gonna have Caucasians. Blue air, blue eyed, walking around saying, "I'm from the transatlantic slave trade." When they find out that we are the Israelites that broke the covenant during the Babylonian wars, and this what we broke the covenant for Egyptian religion. If you go to uh, Jeremiah, and then when the prophet Ezekiel gave his uh, uh, testimony, man, it was the first wave of the Babylonians. The prophet Jeremiah gonna be the second wave, and that's how come his book go. Really, after Ezekiel and so forth, but if you get to Jeremiah chapter 44, this is the whole Israelite nation going into Africa to do the Egyptian religion, and we never returned when the Babylonian uh, uh, wars was over, when the Persians defeated the, the Babylonians, and we had a chance to come out and be reunited with, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the good figs that came uh, uh, back from the... Uh, Babylonian captivity. All right, man. If you go to Jeremiah chapter 44, get down to verse 15. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burnt incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by a great multitude, even all the people that dwelled in the land of Egypt and Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Elohim, we will not hearken unto thee. But we will certainly do so whatever thing go forth out of our own mouth to, to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done to the Queen of Heaven. But we will certainly do so whatever thing that go forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings, our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of food and were well and saw no evil. But since we left off to burn incense unto the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by sword and famine. So the whole Israelite nation ran off into Africa to do the Egyptian religion. And, and, and then how that no Israelites went into Africa to worship Almighty Yah. And then how we all went into Africa to do the Egyptian religion. So those who's claiming the Israelite heritage. Uh, uh, it can be seen as bogus. And then those that are not taken from Africa to the strange land and to bondage to reap the curses are not Israelites. You know what I'm saying? Or uh, 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 not us. You know, even though we got black skin and so forth and... You know, they don't make them us, man. They are not us. And and, and that's like the natives in the um, Americas. They are not us. So, you know, we're going to have to keep it real. And we get our strength when we're dealing with truth. All right, Hebrews, this is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood. I just wanted to show how we was made one during the Babylonian Wars. As I just showed with Prophet Ezekiel when Almighty God told him to get them sticks and combine them together and that will symbolize us being one and if you look at Tanakh history you're gonna see that man everybody was basically one after the Babylonian Wars alright this is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood